Okay, so I'm gonna put their battery in a little bit. I'm gonna charge this camera up. So I'm gonna have to put in a lot of work today. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna be working until I'm gonna do this until 10:30. Take a break, then maybe do some book reading, then do some more B stars. Like, I mean, I got like 20 books to read. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Got over 13 books. I got 13 books here at the library. I got. I have to read later, which I'll read some of it live and. I cannot do no work until I come. Also, guys, work date got my work is gonna get screwed up, guys, tomorrow, which is Friday. My work date got screwed up. So, yeah. No danger. The people in the USA predicted, and the Soviets have appealed to Sweden and West Germany for help. United States offers to give Moscow technical and medical help still go unanswered. I haven't worn well, this shirt in a while, and I have gained a little weight, but guess what, guys? I also lost a little weight, so I'm doing pretty good, guys. I've been walking. I walked a lot the past two days. I walked to work. I walked home. So, yeah, guys, I walked a lot today. I walked a lot the past two days. So, I'm taking a break. I might walk to the diner and walk back home because the heat is ridiculous. There is no independent confirmation of any of that. The tightly controlled Soviet government media are telling their own people next to nothing. They admit officially just two deaths. Yeah, when that happens, I'm going to put the batteries on. Yeah, when this battery dies off, I will load the videos. For most of the day, the Soviet policy was silent. Despite an admission that an accident had happened, there was no coverage, nothing, in the Soviet morning newspapers. Only Radio Moscow, a station aimed mostly at foreign audiences, reported a disaster, saying this. Efforts are being applied to eliminate the consequences of the accident and help the victims. Tonight on the nine o'clock news, the first detailed confirmation of one of the worst nuclear Vladimir Soviet TV. Dead went the report. A radiation leak that had been stabilized, the evacuation of a town and three villages, and other victims getting medical attention. It is clear there is much more here that is not being reported. On the streets of Moscow, the reaction was predictable, a public mostly unaware. I didn't manage to see that, this man said, and then he added. Was that the accident in America or me? Both the Swedish and Danish embassies sent envoys to the Soviet foreign ministry today, asking the Soviets to be more forthcoming. Even today, Soviets reached on the telephone were saying that nothing was wrong in Kiev, a woman at an in-tourist hotel. This is full of tourists, this is country. The hotel is full. Nothing happened. Uh, a, a normal day. But the calm Soviet front on this story is being challenged now, even in the Eastern Bloc. Polish television tonight warned all of its citizens to wash all fresh vegetables, and some milk sales, the warning went on, will be restricted because of possible contamination. Despite hints that the Soviets are growing more open with public information, it's likely that international detection and not a sense of openness forced the Soviets into admit... ...now even in the Eastern Bloc. Polish television tonight warned all of its citizens to wash all fresh vegetables, and some milk sales, the warning went on, will be restricted because of possible contamination. Despite hints that the Soviets are growing more open with public information, it's likely that international detection and not a sense of openness forced the Soviets into admitting this accident. The same Soviet propaganda machine that called the space shuttle accident an example of why America can't be trusted with technology is in no rush now to herald any Soviet technological mistake. Wyatt Andrews, CBS News, Moscow. In Stockholm today and throughout Europe, scientists monitoring the aftermath of the nuclear accident said Stockholm, Sweden. the core of the Soviet reactor has melted down. By far the worst nuclear accident in history. I'm absolutely certain it was a meltdown. Uh, there's, there's no question about that. The Soviets have turned to Sweden and West Germany, two countries well-versed in nuclear technology, for advice on how to fight the fire raging in the core of the reactor. The uh, Soviet officials came to see us asking for advice on possible contacts for help on uh, reactor accidents on the one side and on oh. graphite fire on the other side. That means we're in real trouble. 